Hello, everybody. Everybody ready to go? Here we go. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the, before I say the name of the show, let me tell you a couple things. First of all, where do you go to listen to an interview and the host comes on and plays a beautiful black cornet and a song that's one of the classics and then asks his audience to guess this and there's a hundred million dollar prize if you guess the right name of it. Where do you go for stuff like that? I'll tell you, there's only one place to go, and that's right here, Life After Scientology, and I'm Ron Miscavige. I'm your host. And by the way, let me put my horn away first. On last week's song, I played, well, I, I played the song last week, and there were three people that guessed the name of it, and that is uh, Jan Rosenthal, Robert, Sandy, Beach, and Hanny Sinkoff. Congratulations, all three of you, because you're going to receive online an IOU for $100 million. So now, that's your lucky day. And those are the three people. And the name of the song, <laughs> I better tell you, Moonglow. It had to be Moonglow. Way up in the sky, you know that song from the movie Picnic. That's when it was made famous with, um, oh, I forget, Kim Novak and uh, some other people. But she's the most notable actress in it. Great movie, and that's just, that was kind of the theme song. And there was a song written that would match it, like you could play both songs at the same time, and one would act almost as harmony. And the other song is called Picnic. Yeah. Anyway, that's the introduction to this show, and uh, a little bit off the wall this morning, but there we go. Uh, so let me put that on the side. And we have a special guest this morning, one of your favorites and one of mine, and we're going to talk about the actually five most devious or insane or bizarre things about Scientology. There's going to be five more, so the name of the show is the 10, but this is part one, so we're going to discuss five. Anyway, um, some of these things, now that I look at, after being out for about eight years, I realized that I had to be in a certain state of mind to accept them as being normal. That is how this can come about, where you are kind of you know, boy, you're actually brainwashed. I might as well say the word that fits it better than anything into being able to accept anything that you're told by this cult. Anyway, without further words from me, please welcome Karen De La Curie, my guest this morning. Good morning, Karen. Good morning, Ron. Hello, everybody. Anyway, um, I just give you an introduction to what we're going to be talking about this morning. And I've had some thoughts about one of the subjects, I'll, I'll bring it up when we, when we approach that one, which when I think about now, I, I must have, I, I think, how could I have accepted that? But as I just said a few minutes ago, you are set up mentally to accept anything. So let's get into the first one, Karen, and this is a subject called superpower. Why don't you just get into it for us? Because this is something that you're very familiar with because you were a case supervisor on a lot of these things, weren't you? Well, no, not, not on superpower. I, I was a pilot. I, I, I was run on some of the processes. I got it. As a, as a guinea pig. <laughs> okay. I, I had some guinea pig got it in the wall. Um, but superpower 
is a newfangled thing that came out long after Hubbard died, although he was the source of some of it. And this huge building they call the cathedral, <laughs> the religious word, cathedral is where people pay something like $50,000 to go through these procedures. Now, Ron, you and I will agree that a religion is somehow something that makes you more kind, more ethical, yeah. more sensitive, more empathetic. Well, somehow, more if, if you look at nuns, priests, men of the cloth, ministers, people go to them for relief. But in Scientology, <laughs> the whole thing is to maximize how much money they can suck out of you. It truly, truly is a runaway money extortion racket. Superpower is a jumble of several procedures, but it starts with a space age kind of you know, you know what I'm going to do? The top comment on this will be a link to where you can see pictures of what I'm talking about. Good. I think that's a great idea. Pin, pin that. Pin that so that they see this. It looks like the interior of 2001, A Space Odyssey. These machines are supposed to increase your perceptics your smell, your touch, your sound, your balance, this, your eyesight, this kind of thing. And do you know they spent millions to evolve these ridiculous things? Absolutely ridiculous. You pass a test when you can tell the difference between taste of tangerines, oranges, orange peel, this, this kind of thing. And there are all these vials of peppermint, and banana, and chocolate, and you've got to sniff and identify, and on and on and on. Do you, does this make someone more ethical? You constantly hear of rogue senior Scientologists doing gigantic financial irregularities. OT7s, OT8, super punk graduates involved in the most heinous malfeasance ripping off the i took didn't we discuss the spinoza sentencing is coming out in a matter of weeks right. matter of weeks right they ripped off medicaid for something like 83 million dollars this is this is the, the and you Keep hearing these stories. And, well, and, and, all these people went through superpower. Are they more ethical? No. They're more and more rip-off artists. So yeah, and, what if they could smell banana versus chocolate? Yeah, that's exactly right. And, you know, to repeat basically what you're saying, Scientology claims it is the most ethical group on the planet. Nothing, uh -huh. nothing could be further from the truth. They're the best con artists on the planet. That I will give them. They are brilliant at that. They know how to get a lot of money out of people and deliver nothing in return in many cases, like these statuses they have. Here, I'll tell you what I'll do. You give me $100,000, I'm going to give you a piece of paper that says you're a good guy. Hey, that's pretty. <laughs> that's low overhead, I would say. Don't, don't you think? I mean, you just the cost of... Uh, this paper at Walmart, you can get a ream of it for about six and a half dollars. What the hell? You know, I, I could probably make a hundred million dollars on that. I'm, I'm going to go buy a ream of uh, paper and I'm going to write, you're a great guy and see how many people are going to give me 15 and a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, they're big on certs. You get the certificate. Yeah. You have completed, blah, blah. Now, the reason I thought of superpower as an opening 
is because a woman made oh, it. Wait, wait, Karen. I just, I, yeah. I, I, I got to tell you this because I know we yeah, talked sure. about this before the interview. But these machines that you're talking about, one of them is you stand in it and you get strapped in and it's like a big geosphere and it turns you around, upside down, and you have to keep your balance. And it takes, you know, a, it's actually a good workout machine because your arms and your legs and everything is getting worked out. The end result of that, of me doing that, is that I didn't want to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> that was the big one I had. No goddamn way I'm getting on this thing again. So that's one of the things that's supposed to improve your perception and I don't know what. But, uh, well, I'm glad you brought that up because this balance machine is for people that don't like very high speed rides to be hurled upside down and sideways and spun around like you're in Six Flags Magic yeah. Mountain or you're Disney or yeah. something. This is this this machine could leave someone literally ill and yeah. nauseous. Oh, I can see that. Yeah. Right. I mean, mind you, I was a lot younger when I did it, but still. Uh, I was in my fifth, maybe my sixties, and uh, when when I got done, I'd say I, I don't want to do this again. This is this is terrible. Anyway, sorry for the interruption, but I wanted to get no, that. No, I'm because, glad you brought yeah. that up. Yeah. And anyway, um, you you you, you, you now machines, brought up about they're not only bizarre and weird after costing multi millions in research. What does it do? So what if you can sniff and tell the difference between apple pie and apple custard so what i know what does it do for your ability this is just a bogus ripoff superpower and and oh god do, can you read out please read out what the cult announced that superpower i sent you a little blurb of what they said this would do for the planet and how they could just probably take over the whole planet because of super prime. Can you read it? Can you read it? Well, it's right on top. The opening thing. Super prime. Okay. Was oh, oh, okay. I, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes. Described by Hubbard as a super fantastic confidential series of rundowns that unleash the superpower of the spirit. That means it puts Scientology into new realm of ability, enabling Scientology to create a new world. <laughs> now, that's great copy for a con. If that's what it is. It's a con, you know, like a confidence game. And uh, for them to say that, I'll tell you something. To say it with a straight face, that takes something, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, to say stuff like this to people and have a straight face and take money from them. Wow. Ron, I was run on a superpower process, which literally made me ill. I don't know why or where I got that ill. The process was, where would you be safe? And that was repeated over and over again for two and a half hours. Where would you be safe? Wow. It, 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 it <laughs> it's out of creation of human ability. It's not this super confidential thing. Anybody who picks up a book called Creation of Human Ability can read it. It's an old, old thing jammed into super part. Now, I can understand if the counselor asked, where would you be unsafe? Or even alternated that, because then you would look at places that were dangerous. But this was, where would you be safe? And obviously, I couldn't, I couldn't float the needle. But then again, I was a guinea pig. And I, I was in the middle of God knows what auditing in this. So uh, I, I have a dim view of it. Then this week, Ron, a woman created a bad backlash on superpower. She paid her $50,000, went to the cathedral in Clearwater, did 
everything she was asked of. And she went home sick as a dog, or she became pretty sick after superpower. You know, I've always thought they gloat on this superpower. Sooner or later, someone who finishes the superpower will take off all their clothes and walk naked on Fort Harrison Avenue like Lisa McPherson. I tell you, man. And that, yeah. that, I foresee that coming. Sooner or later, someone will completely go crazy on on this. Well, I could give um, you, by the way, Karen, I'll give you the answer to where can you, ask me the question, where can you be safe? I'm going to give the answer on the air. Okay, here we go. This is the process. Where would you be safe? Away from you and all of your friends. <laughs> 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 there's Away the there's me? the there's the cognition. My needle is floating. Hey, you know, I'm the <laughs> hell out of here. <laughs> but unfortunately, um, you can't do that. I mean, you got a lot of money invested in this. Let's face it, you're paying <clears throat> the big money for this. You're hoping beyond hope that something great is going to happen. <clears throat> yes, there's so much hoopla and so much. Uh, <clears throat> And there's a lot of rah-rah, your anticipation goes up and your belief goes up. Mm -hmm. This must be something. This must be. And and look at the name, power. You're going to restore your power? Yeah. By throwing you into a vertical machine and having you do these space-age tests? What goodness does it give you? What? How does this make you? more enlightened spiritually what a load of <laughs> i won't finish well you know it, it, it doesn't but i mean let's face it i mean the people who are doing it are thinking wow you know uh, l ron hubbard must have known something that i don't know this is something different wow just being able to tell the difference between a lemon and an orange what could that mean <laughs> and they get on to all kinds of significance as to why it's great it's continual yeah. justification of why what's happening to you is good, whereas, in fact, it may be absolute lunacy. <laughs> well, yeah. back to my little anecdote. <clears throat> this woman was from a country called Kazakhstan. It's sort of a little satellite nestled it almost into Russia. Scientology extorts huge amounts of money from wealthy Russians, Ukrainians, and Kazakhstan, the, 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 and Hungary, these Eastern European countries. Really, they do. They somehow have gotten in there and they get, you know, these people coming to flag. Yeah. Clearwater. So because she paid $50,000 from this and went home and got sick as a dog, I, I, I resonated with that because after running Where Would You Be Safe for two and a half hours, I was sick as a dog. Ugh. Wow, yeah. Ugh. Good to be out of all of that. So she went to her government and they've opened a case of criminal fraud. She lost her business, lost her house, lost everything, and gave flag $50,000. When I say flag, I mean their operation out of Clearwater. Yeah. That's the slang name, flag. It's supposed to be the flagship of all their organizations. Right. So, you know, people wonder, Ron, how can governments of the world go after the cult of Scientology? How does it raised to government level. People are baffled. Governments have so much on their plate rather than handle a little little cult with its cultic habits. The reason it does is people get no resolution on being extorted for money and losing their home, going bankrupt, that they eventually flap all this to their local government officials. Right. And after multiple complaints, like they had in Germany, huge astronomic amount, the government then looks into it. That's how governments of the world look into Scientology. Right. So to summarize, we were looking at most bizarre. 
superpower is bizarre. I mean, there are a lot of other questions. Uh, did you get incorrect ethics justice? And did you impose incorrect ethics? Oh, there's all these kind of questions. But the first several hours are these balance sniffing, eyesight touch tests, and da, da, da. And I think they're a waste of time, personally. Yeah. In terms of what spirituality should be. Well, the people coming out of there are not higher spiritually in their thinking, that's for sure. And they have to now figure out what to tell their friends in, in a very ambiguous uh, way what they got out of it. In other words, nothing, basically. But they say, oh, well, you know, now I know I can do such and such and I can do that and I can do that. It's all in the future. It's not like, well, today I just got on the stock market and picked a stock and I made a hundred thousand dollars or I just saw a little boy who couldn't walk and I gave him an assist and he was able to walk in other words no no superpowers like that are forthcoming out of their mouth and it's all in the future now I know I can and now I know I can do this and now I know I can separate my dynamics it's it's baloney in so many words. Power is such a misnomer. There's no power. There's no, no power that anybody gets no. out of it. And superpower graduates die off of cancer, diabetes, heart attacks, just like anybody else in the population. Right. But anybody else in the civilization didn't lose $50,000. Yeah, it's exactly it's right. A, a sort of snake oil pitch. Right. This is snake oil. <laughs> you know... Um, in the if you're a Catholic, you get the last rites, as they know you're going to die in yeah. very soon. You get the last rites. Talking about result in Scientology, one of the things you're told to do this is bizarre. This is bizarre. When you die, you're supposed to exit out of your head and do the running program, which is go find something and run around. <laughs> There's a, <laughs> the last rites you get. You have to find a moon or a star, a heavenly body, and just keep running as a spirit, round and round and round, which is literally <laughs> round. <it. laughs> Go do the running program without a body. That, that's what it is. I, no? I know, yeah, it's just... It's out there. You got to say that, man. I mean, well, well, and Ron, and, and, and okay. there's no complaints because nobody come back and said, "Hey, this didn't work," you know. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, I think that it's such, you know, it, you, you're so you're this blob. The the implication is you're this little round thing, and that you can satellite round and round and round. What really bothered me about that was the running program was used for punishment. Yes, that's right. But now they want $2,500 out of you to make you run. Just run. That's, that's the entire thing. Give me $2,500. Get on this running track. I believe it's the sixth floor of the cathedral in Clearwater. And you run. And you run. Yeah, but Karen, in it, all fairness, you get a nice track suit. You get a little <laughs> bag to put your towel. You have in. to pay additional for that. <laughs> oh, you do. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. my God! Yeah. I, I thought at least you get a track suit and a pair of sneakers no, out of it. No, you don't. <laughs> okay. So uh, the running program is another money extortion racket for twenty five hundred dollars. Arrive at flag, and run five hours a day. Run. The only reason it's all hidden in this building is when it was out at the open at gold, camera crews would fly over and take pictures of this people just running around the pole. I, I was there when it happened, by the way. Oh yeah? Absolutely. Tell, tell yeah. us about it. Well, no, I mean, the running track was across the road. It was on the south side of the base. And yes. I, I worked in the music area, which was on the north north side. And uh, there were times when you could see, like, 
a helicopter or a plane flying over that area, and uh, then you knew that they were taking pictures of the people running around the track. Uh, that's that's about the end of it. But uh, the yeah. people who were running would tell me, you know, yeah, we had a, a, a flyover today, and they were taking pictures. So the running track, I see, called them off the track, and they went inside into the cool down area. So they didn't run for a while, and when they were gone, they'd go out and continue running. And all the commands were it was keep running. That was it. You know, uh, Scientology is a coup, and yet another coup, and yet another coup. By coup, I mean all of management of a certain echelon. They're all busted, and they're all sent to the prison camp called RPF, Rehabilitation Project Force. And one of the very big coups in 82, all of them, all the top execs were sent to run 12 hours a day. This was pure punishment. Yeah. How can you sentence someone to just run around a pole? 12, Alan Buchanan was one of them. Who people. was? Alan Buchanan. Right. Do you remember Alan? Alan Buchanan? Uh, yeah, I know the name. I just didn't get it at first, that's all. Oh, okay. Um, and he fled. He... Interface has become more and more tighter to prevent people fleeing. See, that's another bizarre thing. What kind of religion? What kind of cult? Well, cults do lock you in. There's no way you can leave. You cannot leave. Right? No, you can't. There, it, I mean, you're in a compound, and there's a barbed wire fence with the razor sharp spikes <laughs> sticking out, and also a set sticking in, so they would prevent people from going out and people from coming in. Although I'll tell you, we we didn't have anybody. Well, I think there was one incident where a guy jumped the fence, and then he was caught. But Tom, was it Tom Devout? No, 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 a guy from the outside jumped and got in. Oh, he got in. Yeah, there, right. there was one incident that I remember, and and Kenny Seabold uh, caught the guy and he handled him. They they just let him out then, you know. Security, yeah. yeah security. So they have security circling on bicycles and yeah. rover and all, you know. Oh, no, just... I mean, they have cameras now that are infrared, and you can literally see in the dark. I was in the, the booth with the security guards, and Kevin Catano showed me this screen where he could focus it on any area, and you could see, like, a figure walking. This is at night. Yeah. I mean, this is really sophisticated equipment they have. This is like... The U.S. Army and and the military grade stuff. This is, this is no no kid stuff, you know. I worked in a satellite well, wait, wait, wait area a minute. Wait, for listen. a couple of years. And just imagine, this is a religion. What the hell is this? <laughs> what the hell is going on? Yeah. It, it's like, it's like a Monty Python show. Just to finish my sentence, satellites can do this from one mile up in the air. Yeah, they can. This thermal imaging and digital imaging and infrared imaging yeah. can be done. Do you know a satellite can see the copyright C on a golf ball on a golf course from outer space? Wow. That's how good cameras have gotten. And Scientology employs this kind of camera to watch you. There are cameras, cameras, cameras. There's, the, <laughs> there's a wonderful video showing just how many cameras are in Los Angeles on L. Ron Hubbard Way and Sunset, really hidden, but watching you because you're coming near that building or s series of buildings. That's also bizarre. Wow. We're looking at oddities, things that are bizarre, bizarre, strange. So I find instead of giving you, Catholics give you your last rites, indoctrinating you to leave your body and go find a star or a planet or a lake or whatever and keep running around it after death 
it's supposed to stabilize you. Isn't that a bizarre last rites? Oh, no, no, not at all. That totally makes sense to me, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that totally makes sense. What the hell, you know? Yeah, that's what I'm yeah. going to do then. Skip this last rites business, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, we're looking, when, when I say bizarre, it's, I'm asking you, Ron, how is it ecclesiastical and spiritual and religious? Well, I'll uh, tell you in two words, it isn't, okay? Two words, just it isn't. It yeah. is a story that is not true. It's the simplest terms mm -hmm. I can put it in. In other words, they misspoke when they told you these things, meaning they lied. But if you say, I misspoke, oh, well, that's okay. But if you say, I lied, what, you liar, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but Ron, we believed in it all. We I participated know. in it. Hey, I'm, I'm guilty. It I'm guilty. I had yeah. a mindset. I used to recruit people into the Sea Org. I used uh, to do videos I? promoting L. Ron Hubbard's lectures. I wanted yeah. to have a program going called CEPL, Society for the Education of Planet Earth through L. Ron Hubbard Lectures. Man, I'm telling you, my thinking was off the goddamn wall. Yeah. until yeah. the one day when Fernando Gamboa said to me, you know, Ronnie, we were conned. And he's a dear friend of mine, so yeah. I took the heart. I went in the hallway where I have a mirror and looked at myself and thought, you were conned. Yeah. <laughs> that was the beginning of peeling off the yeah. skins of false falsities and lies that I, I had come to believe in, so... It, it had you know, to be that. I, it, it had to be I, that because that, that's, that's the hardest thing a person can do is admit they're wrong. Yeah. I, I still hung on to... It, there's, a, there's a slow, slow wake up of it all. I didn't switch on and off like a light. I'm in. Oh, I'm caught. I was not able to make that on-off switch work that fast. I still held on to a lot. Well, when they made those hate videos on me, after I slaved for them for $20, working 60 to 80 hour weeks for 20 bucks, 25 bucks, for 20 years of my life, when they turned on me, got my son to disconnect from me, made the hate videos on me. And once my son died at their toxic disconnection policy, that was it. Yeah. That was when I realized I'd been con yep. to use the language you're using. This was a con. Yeah. This is a, <laughs> that that was but I still had fragments of belief. Now, let's go on to the next major bizarre thing. Okay. Are you looking at something, wrong? Are you thinking something? Well, are you looking at number four, uh, punishment? Or cleaning toilets and bat dumpsters with a toothbrush? Is that what you're looking at? Is this bizarre point? No, I was going to get into the volcanoes and everything. But since you brought up that, let's just do that. In Scientology, when you're punished, you're removed from whatever job you had and you're put on the decks. Decks means, well, there's no ship these days, but they still use the word deck. Yeah. It means you're going to work on the land. You're going to work on the cement. And you're not just punished to clean like a normal cleaner, you're forced to clean areas with a toothbrush. This is a signature Scientology punishment. Yeah. Clean with a toothbrush. And people are forced to clean dumpsters, stinking smelling dumpsters. You know how large a dumpster is? With a toothbrush. This is, this is Scientology. You clean with a toothbrush. They're, you're also sent to clean toilets with a toothbrush. Ooh, ooh. 
Ron, tell the story of the guy who had to clean the toilet with his tongue. No, not the toilet, the toilet but, but the bathroom floor. Mark, bathroom. Mark Ginga Nelson, who was a very, as you would say if you were in the Seerg, ups that person. In other words, his production value was really worth something. I mean, if he did this in the outside world, the guy would make good money for what he did. Like, as an example, he put together a complete gym set up for uh, David Miscavige in one of the facilities that he stayed in, in the Hacienda apartments in Clearwater, Florida. Did this whole thing, came out really nice. I mean, detail, just re right down to every little small thing being just perfectly right. Well, one day he did something, I don't even know what he did, so I, I, I can only speculate it was probably something minor like uh, he didn't have the right towel ready for somebody to come into Dave's workout area or he let somebody else in. Whatever it was, he was then assigned to clean a bathroom tile floor with his tongue. And Karen, he actually did it. He went in and cleaned it with his tongue. Now, I'll tell you something more bizarre, and I just found this out this past week. After doing that, he, quote, came to his senses, unquote, in other words, realized he caused all this and did what they call conditions and went back on post after having made to do that. Whereas if you were in a normal state of mind, and somebody were to say to you, you're going to clean that bathroom with your tongue, you'd say, hey, I'm out of here, and don't stop me because yeah. I will get out if I have to use physical force on you and just leave. That would be the same thing to do. His mind was so set up to just be an accommodating individual. Don't ask questions why. Just do whatever you're told. Over years of mental brainwashing, that well, excuse me, of mental brainwashing, that he actually cleaned that floor with his tongue. And yeah. then, and then, after that, realized something, whatever the hell it was, you know, went back on post, and he's, I understand, back on post in Scientology working. Yeah, in the CEO. Yeah, th this little anecdote is actually on video. It's part of a court record. Debbie Cook told this in Texas yeah. on video, on camera, in a court of law, looking, he went down on his knees, haunches, and his tongue must have ached. Imagine sucking the dirt out of the floor. No, I can't. With your tongue. It's tough. It's tough. It's tough to even imagine it's that because you talk about the unsanitary ingestion mm -hmm. of the germs and bacteria that's on the floor. Yeah. It's unbelievable. He must have a hell of an immu immune system to o overcome this and, you know, stave yeah. off any illness or something that that could have produced. But his white, you know, those fighter cells, man, I, I'll tell you, if he could sell those to people who were sick, they could cure any goddamn thing, you know? You know, um, I, I, I recently did a post on the tragic death of a young Mexican guy on free winds called Jorge, Jorge Arroyo. And Jorge Arroyo? Yeah. He was at gold, you know that? Yeah, yeah. Well, he ended up on free winds. Are, you, are we looking at the same Jorge? He was a thin Mexican. Yeah, it's the same. Would, There's uh, only one Jorge, Jorge Arroyo. So let, me, let, me, let me tell you now. Jorge fell hopelessly in love with the RTC rep, Lori, Lor, on, on free winds. He was a lowly engine room guy. You know, the engine room is <laughs> low on the hierarchy. And he had this big crush on her. And when Lori found out, she was furious. It was almost like it contaminated her for some lowly person who worked in the engine room. She was RTC, Religious Technology Center, rep on freeways. 
So she ordered him to be brutalized. She wanted, she demanded harsh epics, harsh. This is, this is the cult of Scientology. This is how, this is the mindset. We're going to punish you. We're not just going to punish you lightly. We're going to make you clean a dumpster with a toothbrush, lick a bathroom floor to humiliate. This, this is the signature of Scientology. Punishments are brutal. You're abused to shrink you into the size of a dot yeah. so that you can't fight back. The idea is to punish you with humiliation. Jorge was given a savage epics, brutal handling. So he goes on free wings and he takes a sheet and he hangs himself to death. Jeez. Kills himself on free wings. Only five people on free wings knew about it. They eventually leaked a thing that he had a sudden heart attack. He didn't have a heart attack. He killed himself because of the brutal ethics handling of Scientology as ordered by the RTC rep lorry. Wow. Now they were the ship Free Winds was in Aruba. They do this ABC. It's called ABC. Aruba Bonne Curacao. Right. Aruba A Bonne C. They were in Aruba. Right. But the cult has its protection in the most criminal island in the Caribbean, Curacao. <gasps> if anyone listening could just Google Curacao human trafficking, Curacao money laundering, you will find that Curacao is the hub. It is the most crooked absolute gangster thug island of the Caribbean. And do you know that it's Free Wind's home port? Yeah. I That's know their that. home. Yeah. Right? Money laundering, human trap, sound familiar? Sound, uh, there are Venezuelan mm. women that are extorted from Venezuela and human trafficked for sex in the brothels. And, and apparently, Curacao is just booming with its gangster criminality. So they quickly, with the dead body of Jorge, they rush the ship to Curacao where they can, they've got golden handshakes and the port and they're best, best friends with the crooked. And Jorge's body is taken off the ship and exported and never to be seen off again. The whole thing was covered up. Wow. This is another bizarre, strange thing. Scientology has the ability to cover up its suicides and homicides. Just cover up, cover up. You hear about it a few years later. Yeah. Eventually it leaks out, right? It leaks out. Wow. So there's there's another bizarre thing. Oh, rest in peace, dear Mexican Jorge, who killed himself on free winds, all covered up, successfully covered up. Yeah, and, and let me tell you something. The I, ability to cover up, Ron. I, I I didn't know him well, but I knew him, you know, on a, a casual basis. He was a very gentle type person. You know he that. was. Everybody says he was a loving, gentle person. Yeah, he was. And he got completely overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, so if we're looking at what is bizarre, what is Scientology Free Wind's cult? What is it doing in a gangster thug port as its home port? Curacao is not clean. Yeah. And, and, and if any of you listeners just Google Curacao Criminal Island, you get hundreds of hits. Well, the, the old Please. saying, the old saying, Karen, birds of a feather flock together uh, probably applies. It's that simple. There's a lot of truisms 
that float through society over the decades and millennia, actually. And that's one of them. Birds of a feather flock together. True statement, isn't it? Well, that means you and I and everybody that left, we extricated ourselves from the yeah. birds of a feather fly together. Well, we, 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 that we realized that our feathers didn't match their feathers and we got the hell out of there. <laughs> we flew. We fled. <laughs> flew the coop, right? We flew the coop. Well, listen, I, I want to get into something before we are through with this program, and that's children, because there's a bizarre thing that took place on the free winds, and this is... I want you to start telling this, and then I'll, I'll contribute as we go along. Well, yes. What happened is David Miscavige, leader of Scientology, has some high need for status and recognition where he was walking on free winds and a couple of kids ignored him. They didn't jump up and say, good morning, sir. They didn't even greet him. And apparently, David Miscavige became furious. He fumed, he thought about this. He found this as highly disrespectful. So he ordered a program for children to be brought up to snuff, to be brought up to scratch, to be handled. And an order went out to the most loyal, especially those who've done OT8, that the children were mandated to come to free winds to get with it, to get with the program. And the first thing these so 100, 150, 200 children whose parents paid significant money, this wasn't a freebie. The first thing these children had to do was what we call in slang, book and model, which is the technical name is opening procedure by duplication for 25 hours. Ron, they were eight year olds, they were 10 year olds. And for, and for several hours a day, these are the commands. Th this is what happens. Let me, let me explain. Go on. A book is put in one corner of the room and a bottle is put in another corner of the room. And the, and the indoctrination starts. Look at that book. The little one, the eight-year-old would say yes. Walk over to that book. Thank you. Pick up the book. Thank you. What is its weight? It's a one pound, 16 ounces. What is its temperature? 70 degrees, the temperature of the room. Thank you. What is its color? It's green. Thank you. Put it down in exactly the same place. Then look at that bottle. Good. Walk over to that bottle. Good. Pick up the bottle. Good. What is its color? What is the temperature? What is it? That is run over and over and over nonstop, maybe five hours a day for 25 hours. I'll tell you something. I can't even imagine. Children have to go a, through that. A, a child. It was catastrophic. Catastrophic. Yeah. Some children rebelled. They wouldn't do it. They called their parents. Some people left free winds forever after their children were put through this. And and right now, when it's bizarre, there used to be something called life repair. You could come in and you could talk to a counselor about the rough points in your life. Now, it doesn't matter what you come in and say, you hold into the purification rundown. In fact, the life repair has been taken off the great chart that, you know, they, they advertise what they're selling. Right. Life repair seems to have disappeared. But you go to the Purif, take mega doses of vitamins, and sweat out your poisons. See, there's a one-size-fits-all. You are shoehorned into a cookie-cutter, prefabricated so-called bridge. And when you're done with the purification rundown and you've sweated five hours a day in the sauna, you're then put on to what they 
call them, the survival rundown. And people are on that for months, day after day. I know people who've been on it two years. Now, in the survival rundown, you do what I just told you, book and bottle for hours and hours and hours. How is this religious? How is this ecclesiastical? And I, I give you the, the magic two words. It isn't. Here, I'll do it with sound effects. It isn't. <laughs> well, there are people that have some, they call it a win or a different perception and they feel the room got brighter and all that. But they are not, after being taken through this, they are certainly not kind. They're certainly not more empathetic, more, they certainly don't have more wisdom. Nope. And they certainly aren't enlightened. And they certainly aren't more spiritual. Yeah. So I think that forcing people to touch objects in the room and to walk around looking at things, touching things for 150 hours for whatever it is, $5,000 to $10,000, I think that's a con. I'm going to state that in black and white. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, I think you're correct in assume, uh, you know, saying that it's a con. Be well, I'll tell you why you're correct. Because it is a con. In other words, you're observing the obvious. And it's funny that uh, Scientology named the word for that. Remember, obnosis? Observing the obvious? <laughs> you know, you, you'll run into <clears throat> some people who will emphatically say they got a win there, they got a win here. Good, good. I'm glad they got a win. But I will tell you, as a case supervisor, for many people, this was a kind of torture. Yeah, it just was. to get through it. It was it was literally a kind of torture. Yeah. But yeah. to force youngsters, remember these children brought onto free wings. They don't have a choice. This, they had no power of choice. No. They were holding because their parents were Scientologists. These were second generation uh, children, forced. And I'll tell you. <laughs> you will never get them holding the cans or doing Scientology Thank after this. Well, kind of there you go. That's the goodness that come out of it, okay? They're uh, done with Scientology. And I can <laughs> tell you this, after you hear these points, if you're considering going into Scientology, I would tell you, go and talk to a friend and say, hey, here's, here's what I'm thinking about doing, and run it back and forth and see if your friend says, yeah, I think you should do it, because I will tell you, I'll give you my advice. Don't do it. Well, anyway, listen, We, I, I think my, my, my producer's trying to get hold of yes. me here. Go on. Yes. Yeah. Um, we have some super chats. Oh, good. Um, uh, the first one uh, from Overlord Chaos. Uh, question for Ron and Karen. The Aftermath show was pulled from A&E channel and streaming site on Latin, in Latin America. Did Scientology get to make them pull it out because they are coming here. I didn't get the last part. What was the last part? Is uh, did Scientology get to make them pull it out? Because they are coming here. I don't have an answer for that, Karen. Do you? I still don't understand the question. Can you? Uh, did uh, did Scientology it? make them pull this out? Pull pull the show out because they are coming here. Oh no no no. There's no pull out at home. No, no, that didn't happen. Not, I, I just, <laughs> I'm brain dead. Whatever, pull out what? The show? The Aftermath show? I, I, yeah, I think that's what they were talking about. The the af life after the, I, sorry, life after Scientology. I, I've got that on the brain. Um, the well, Aftermath. The, the uh, Aftermath show, yeah. Well, no, look at a and &E was done with that. They are now in the process of getting another uh, network or internet outfit to, to produce a, another show. Leah and Mike will be right back. What's right. that? They're, they're, they'll be right back. They'll be right on the air. Oh, yeah. There'll yeah. be a and lot more shows. It won't be with A&E, but Leah and Mike will have a lot more freedom 
without the stringent lawyers that when it's a very, very big network, the lawyers are very protective. Yeah. And, oh, God, the bureaucracy sort of handcuffed and strangled. They couldn't run this and they couldn't do this. And, this. and they're not, Leah and Mike are not going to put up with that. They're not going to tolerate no. such editorial uh, thing. They already but, have an option lined up and are working on it right now. I happen to yeah. know that personally, okay? Okay, so yeah. moving on. The next uh, Super Chat is from Mary R. Uh, thank you, Ron and Karen. Oh, well, thank you for the acknowledgement. I appreciate that because, listen, I enjoy doing this and so does Karen, it, but it's a little bit of time. It's consuming, and uh, I think it's one of the more worthwhile things I've ever done in my life. Uh, and then we have a $2 Super Chat, no message, um, from Nerman... O, o, Odkan. Sorry if I butchered the last name. Um, so. Well, thank you for the donation. And Norman, how do you spell his last name? O D K A N. No, it's a girl, Norman. She's she's on message boards. Oh, Norman oh. Odkan. I think she. Um, well, I, I do know that she was married to a former commanding officer of uh, an org in Europe. Mm -hmm. Norman Atkin. Uh -huh. Norman Atkin, you're famous. Look Norman, at that. Norman. She's a girl. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right. Karen knew her. All right. Famous contributor. Awesome. So uh and then we have uh Carrie Ann. Uh has anyone ever seen Shelly yet? And if not, do you think she is still alive? And situation seems like something's going on. Go on, Karen. You can well, she's your daughter-in-law. Um, you know, Shelley displeased David Miscavige and was sent into exile just like Hubbard did with Mary Sue Hubbard. Hubbard, Hubbard did the exact same thing. Yep. Mary Sue was sh shunted off in a house. Um, uh, Never to be seen again. And not only that, I know personally of two tape editors that edited her, edited her out of L. Ron Hubbard's lectures. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, everybody knows where Shelley is. She's not vanished. Yeah. Scientology has these ex buildings where they got tunnels and titanium plates buried underground with the technology. Oh, talk about bizarre. <laughs> when there's the these these titanium uh, uh, sheets of the technology are in case there's a holocaust nuclear and the whole planet blows up the scientology technology will be preserved i am sure in a nuclear holocaust people will want to look at titanium plates oh yeah they'll want <laughs> to find out to clean your w w a windshield on a car with new uh, newspapers w wet newspapers because that print ink cleans it. That's valuable data, and that should be preserved for future generations. Anyway, on Shelley, she's not vanished. Yeah. She's about two hours out of Los Angeles in one of these very high security, uh, you know, complete. Uh, she's in a complete lockdown place with very, very tight security. She can't wander off and so on. But apparently, that's. She's been there like 10 years now. Oh, longer than that. Yeah. Is it longer than 10 years? Yeah, because yeah, right. I think it was 2005. Right. That would be 15 years, wouldn't it? 15 years, yeah. yes. You're right, Ron. You're right. 15 okay. years in exile. Michael, was in, that it or no? <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's it, unless someone gets a super chat in in the, in the next uh, five minutes or so. Okay, so I think this was a good wrap. And listen, tune in for further because we're going to take up the other five points that's going to be in a future show and uh you'll see it if you're a subscriber you'll get a notification as to when it's going to be so let me do some closing uh, remarks here um this isn't this is an ongoing uh, effort that i think all of us have to continue putting the pressure on because there are a lot of other people who are doing it too and i i'm thankful for my brothers on that and, and talking about brothers you all know I'm a Marine Corps veteran. I just discovered 
a great way for uh, a veteran to work out. As a matter of fact, I did a couple, four, three videos on it. It's called Home Workouts for Veterans or Anybody. And I found something that, let's say, a veteran, uh, an advanced stage veteran, can get for a very nominal price and exercise his body and hopefully give him a longer life and a more healthy life and, you know, some strength and all the other stuff that go along with getting exercise. That's a bit of a commercial, but it is. it was done because for years I've been looking for something because I get my treatment at a hospital and it's great, but I see a lot of guys my age barely making, getting around, and they could stand the exercise. So much for that. <clears throat> the other thing is I do what I call story time, where I read stories out of my two humorous books that I've written, and I do another video called Life Lessons, where I give advice to young people that maybe they don't have a father or maybe an uncle who ever told them some of the stuff, and it's just it's street knowledge. It's from my own experience. So those are the other things I do. And if you care to contribute to this and become a Patreon, I would appreciate it very much. But minimally, could you please subscribe? And uh, when you do, uh, hit the bell. I don't know what the hell this is, but it's something. If you hit the bell, then you get notified when shows are coming up or any other news we have. And I think that's about it. And if you want to know any more, go to my website, therealronmiscavige.com, and uh, peruse it and see what interests you. So, meanwhile, that's it for this show. And, Karen, I want to thank you very much. You're, I thank you for your time and uh, getting all this stuff like, together. Ron, yeah. usually right at the end we ask, was there a lesson learned? So, yeah. in all these bizarre, strange things, we didn't ask, was there a lesson learned? Oh, okay. Well, lesson that... is if something is very bizarre and strange and doesn't add up and you can't connect the dots, I think the lesson is speak up, make a note of it. Like, don't be a fool like me. <laughs> and Ron would say, don't, don't or me. swallow it. What would you say was the lesson learned? Well, learn, when, when you learn, learn by our mistakes. Let's, let, let's oh. put it there. Here's the lesson learned learn by our mistakes. Because yeah. that's what is Negative. happening here. It's mistakes Negative. that we made, and we're exposing the bizarre, the unusual, that we should have spotted as such. But being in the state of mind we were, we accepted it. So all of you out there, learn, if something doesn't seem real, it probably isn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. so I, I could go on, but I think I'll just let yeah. it go with that. And uh, That's good. <laughs> but I, I got to give you a great thank you, Karen, for doing this. I oh, really, really pleasure. do appreciate Anytime. it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Pleasure. Okay. So from Karen and Ron, this is Life After Scientology. And I will see you on the next episode. See you then. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.